Welcome to the Soul Verve Lounge, a podcast for modern entrepreneurs that focuses on digital marketing ecosystems for small businesses. Join your host, CEO and marketing director, Stephanie Rubio, as she brings you marketing tips with a shot of Cafe Con Dulce. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Sober Lounge. My name is Stephanie Rubio. I am the CEO and marketing director here at Sober Marketing Group, bringing you this week's episode. And today, I want to chat with you a little bit about sponsoring events. And it's a strategy, really, that I have been using for my business for the past four years. And I'm as I'm putting together more and more events for clients and dabbling a little bit into event marketing even, I have noticed that a lot of people don't really know some of the benefits that come with event marketing sponsorships. And for me, it's important that I relay this information to you because if you're anything like me, in the beginning of my business, I focused a lot on the business. I focused on building my credibility, building my brand awareness. And sometimes if you're really not putting yourself out there and you're out networking and you're constantly being visible, it's really, really difficult. And then more so when you can't really attend a lot of conferences up front because a lot of that capital that you have, if you have investment capital and or, or even money to invest back into your business in the beginning, it's really, really difficult to say, oh, I'm gonna take these $500 and I'm going to you know, go to a conference and a lot of the really good conferences are sometimes not even in your hometown, okay? So one of the things that I've done and I've done well is that I have sponsored various events where a high concentration of my ideal audience is going to be um, present at, okay? And it naturally started for me very organically. So at first, it wasn't really a strategy right away. It sort of became a strategy after I started seeing its ROI. But I can guarantee you that if you start investing in sponsoring events, you are going to see an ROI. Is there a strategy behind it? Absolutely. Does everything in marketing have a strategy? Absolutely. Uh, But if done right... I think it's something that can work for you and your business and could really start to take the pressure off of this desire to have to be in attendance of a lot of these different conferences and workshops and things of this nature that are time consuming, that if you do not have the right team in place, that if you do not have, you know, the right manpower in the beginning it, it just, it takes a lot of time away from your business. That's just the bottom line. I mean, travel alone is expensive. And then you're thinking of taking time from building your business in order to attend a lot of this stuff. And realistically, a lot of people just can't do it. And I know a lot of people seem like they're attending a lot of these things, but a lot of them are invited to. A lot of them, you know, they're, they're, they're just so happen to be really great events being put together in their hometown so they can easily attend. Um, And then a lot of people also go into a lot of these events as speakers, which is even even better in many cases. So for me, um, sponsoring was just a natural fit. And it allowed me to kind of cancel all those things out so that I can then put a lot of focus on my business. So I really want to talk to you today about the why. So Three reasons why you need to start sponsoring events in 2020, okay? So the first reason is just strictly visibility. So if you're getting your brand in front of a large audience who hasn't heard anything about your business is pure gold, Okay, the bigger the event, the more press and the more social media mentions that you get during and after an event day is going to be astronomical. Okay, 
So a tip for this, if that is your goal, okay, if your goal is brand visibility, then a tip that I have for you is when you're contacting event sponsors for from or, or people that are putting together an event. So like an event coordinator, event marketer, um, a PR team. And they say to you, well, yes, we have these sponsorship packages. You get one social media mention, you get an email blast, you get blah, blah, blah. All of these things are amazing, but you need to look at the numbers. Okay. So I was recently invited into to to do a, an event sponsorship here in town in Orlando. And when I requested the, the data, so I wanted to know the number specifically of email subscribers to the list for this particular company, and they weren't able to give it to me. And obviously that was a red flag because if you're confident in your numbers, then you have no problem sharing them. And even more so when you're you're asking for sponsorship, you want that data to be factual and you want it to be true. Because if someone needs a report, even if you have to, you know, pull together something, you want to make sure that these numbers are real, right? So if you're making an investment for brand visibility purposes, you want to make sure that they actually actually have the numbers that they say they are going to have. Because there's no point in sponsoring an event with 25 email subscribers or 100 email subscribers even. I would say anything below 500 email subscribers to me is a very, very low list um, to, to say sponsor an event. Okay, because think about it. How much does a Facebook ad cost? Okay, how much does a, 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 a click per link cost you uh, over on Facebook or even Instagram, Instagram stories ad, right? So if you're willing to pay over a dollar per click, then by all means, go ahead and sign up. But I know I'm not. And so I can get my brand again through ads then for a little bit, you know, even, even a little bit more uh, on the budget end, but I know I'm going to get a higher return. Okay. So think about it that way. You got to be very strategic again, how, how it is that you're going to go about this. And that's one of the things that I do. I always ask for the email list number and I even ask for reports if it's a larger event. Okay. One of the things that I do is that every year I really just put together a small budget for event sponsorships. Um, we have a budget for things like donations and things like that. And so event sponsorships is a big chunk because we want our brand to be visible. And especially if I'm not going to be able to attend, like say quarter one, quarter two, et cetera. If I'm going to attend an event, it's pretty much always going to be quarter three. If you do not catch me in quarter one or two, um, that's why, because I do a lot of attending of events and things of this nature, conferences and workshops and stuff in quarter three. It's just a natural lull in business during the summer. Um, I'm pretty chilled out as far as business goes here. Uh, quarter four, as we all know, it's pretty shot. Um, there's no way with the holidays and holiday marketing. It's just not happening. Quarter one as well, just coming off of the holidays. And quarter two is really about putting your head down and getting busy so that you can have a successful remainder of the year. Okay, so for me, quarter three is when I do it. And so I always just start doing my research. Okay, what events are going to happen in town? Is there a colleague that's putting together an event um, or, or something like that quarter? If there, it's happening in quarter three, chances are that we're going to sponsor somehow, some way, whether it's services, we sponsor financially, we sponsor tables, we sponsor whatever they may be, you know, may, may be available to sponsor. Sometimes I even pitch. If I don't see something on a list, I say, listen, do you need this? And I, and then I get, um, I'm able to get in, in a sponsorship situation in a, in a different way. So get creative as well, but definitely if brand visibility is your number one priority, then the numbers have to add up. Okay. And then it also think about another thing. If it's an event that hasn't been put on before, okay, if it's a new event, you also want to take that into consideration. Okay. So what were their numbers for the previous event? And if they cannot provide you with that information, 
then that's also a problem. So you want to be able to just just look to see if it's if it's a good return for you. OK, the second thing is um, community goodwill. That's for me huge because, again, it's the purpose. It's the purpose. There are some events that you do because you know, again, a high concentration of your ideal client is going to be in one room, in one location at one given time. It's just a recipe for success, right? Especially if it's done right, especially if your collateral is on point. However, There are some sponsorship situations that you're going to be involved in that have a lot to do with community goodwill. Why? Because people like people to do good. They want to see people doing good. Good deeds, good in life, feeling good, um, and, and just acting in good will. People love that. It motivates them. So seeing it is even motivating for people. And so they enjoy it. And so it gives your brand the perception that you're looking for if that's what you're looking for. So Verve Marketing Group, for example, we're faith-based digital marketing boutique agency. And what does that mean? That means that we're faith-based, right? And so our faith is real, literally weaved into everything that we do here at Silver. And so we oftentimes sponsor events that are based around certain um, organizations because of their goodwill, because they're giving back to the community, Okay, they're giving back to things like orphanages, they're giving back in education to underprivileged children. So it's just us doing good. So it doesn't always have to mean that there's going to be a massive return and you're going to get all this brand visibility. Sometimes we do it just because it feels good. Okay, this right here strengthens the image of your company and your business. Okay, and it's a very valuable benefit, huge valuable benefit. Um, Customers love brands that care about spreading positive message and helping communities and getting involved because it sets of it sets you apart from others in a very different way. Um, as you know, we have the Silver of Gifts program here in house, which is the pro- our nonprofit gift back program. So we give back to the community in this way. And Oftentimes, a lot of these nonprofits also host events and they host um, different type of workshops, if you will, etc. And we often become sponsors as well, because not only are we helping them from a marketing standpoint, but then we turn right back around and we also um, help them um, in becoming sponsors for these various events. So it really just goes hand in hand um, together. Okay. And then the last reason is really building relationship, building relationship and strengthening your network. So key in business, especially again, if you are someone that like myself, those first four years of business have been so just important for me to to really, it, it, they, they had a purpose, they had a meaning, they had a why. And for me, that was to really solidify Suburb um, in various ways in the marketing arena. And so for Suburb, it was important for me to kind of put time apart to do what I had to do those first couple of years. And I wasn't always able to attend a lot of events. Um, I'm getting, you know, since 2019, I've gotten a lot better about going out and networking and doing all that. But between 2016 and 2018, it was really business through and through, right? So working with clients, um, helping clients elevate their game, helping clients elevate their brands and businesses, and continuing to gain um, their, their momentum and really our momentum in return. And so now I'm starting to do a little bit more networking. But back then it was very, very difficult. And so sponsoring events allowed me to connect with CEOs, CFOs and team members of different organizations and area colleagues and local uh, small business owners and even regional, national so that I can get my name out there and I could be involved without necessarily having to be in the room. Okay, so 
what that translated into, okay, was a lot of partnerships, a lot of partnerships, okay? A lot of our white label clients and white label partners have come from these different partnerships um, and sponsorships that we've done, okay? Um, It also allowed us to solidify a lot of relationships in a non-competitive way because what ends up happening when you have two marketers joined together to sponsor an event, um, natural partnerships occur for a podcast episode or to sponsor more events together or to do a live series. Um, We've hosted webinars for our email list that have been with you know, other agency owners across the country, and they have translated very well. And people enjoy them because people like um, people that are like minded and in the same industry people, there's an affinity for people working together and, um, and being able to collaborate in in a way that's, that's non competitive and, um, and it doesn't feel forced. And so what sponsoring events has done is that it has allowed me to continue to get the brand out there, increase our brand awareness, continue to support our community by showing goodwill, okay? And it has continued to strengthen all of the relationships with various colleagues across the country, um, all from the comfort of my home office. And it's one of the things in one of the strategies that I strongly recommend that you adopt. Adopt it early. We're still not in conference season, really. Conference season is kind of kicks off, I want to say quarter two, between quarter two and the end of quarter three. So you have time. Put together a small strategy. Put together your own media kit. If you're going to be doing the pitching for sponsorship, um, if you are requesting sponsorship information, make sure they have a media kit. Make sure they have all of their data, right, and all of their numbers. And make sure you are, you understand the strategy behind the why, the reasoning for why you're doing it. If you got those things down, you'll be good to go, Okay. I'm going to be delivering more information on this topic over on the Suburb blog. So make sure you check that out this uh, coming week. And if you have any other questions, as always, just go ahead and reply to this episode by emailing me at hello at suburb.com. I would love to have a convo with you. You can also find us on Facebook and on Instagram by simply searching Soverve and send us a DM and I'd love to chat with you there. Thank you so much for spending your morning with me and I hope you have a good week. Bye.